The term was originally coined by James Bartholomew for The Spectator to decry people who say, I don't like this thing very much, in order to feel good about themselves and then just vote Labour every few years or whatever and take no stake in actually making things better. This is a fairly straightforwardly good call to action. The term actually decried a real, existing problem. Of course, then the idiots got their hands on it. <clears throat> Wait, let me sip my tea. <laughs> okay, here we go. <clears throat> Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Procrastinators Podcast, a podcast on the internet by people also on the internet. We make stuff, and now we're talking about other stuff. I am the best guy ever, and today we're joined by such charismatic individuals as Tom Oliver. Hello, I am here, signaling hmm. my presence. Hmm. Excellent. Virtuous is it is indeed. I, uh, I try. A hypocrite is here. I'm great. The end. <laughs> <laughs> Lethal Aurora Mage. And I'm not like the other girls. I'm oh, purple. Oh yeah. <laughs> Excellent. And uh and the the often forgotten furtive Ben. The fur the furtive Ben, so easily <laughs> forgotten. Uh, uh crou crouched in darkness. <laughs> <laughs> Origin of all despair in the world. Yeah. Uh, yes. Yeah. Excellent. Excellent. I try. Uh thanks for thanks for being here, everybody. And thank you, audience, for being here as well. It's time to talk about some some dumb shit. So our topic today is indeed virtue signaling. Wow. Virtue signaling. Wow, mm -hmm. Nate. Good. Is that <laughs> impressive? Is that, is, yeah. Is virtue oh, thank signaling you. when when they get a big but, big old light bulb and then they shine it in the sky and then virtue man comes? Is that what they do? Exactly. I, basically. You know, I'm I'm unclear. I'm unclear on what virtue signaling is, but I but I, I think I think I know where we can find out, Nate. We I, gotta we gotta go to a place where there's where there's both the intellectual content we desire and the street smart delivery that makes it go down oh so smooth. Dictionary. Guys, before before we go and read the official uh -huh. definition of virtue signaling, I just mm. wanted to define <laughs> oh, a, a, a possible meaning for a virtue signal. Like, do you guys okay. have you seen the anime Saint Young Men? Yes, yes, I have. So yeah, when Buddha is being virtuous, he starts to glow, so he's signaling to everyone <laughs> that he's being virtuous. <laughs> That's that should be the thumbnail. Like, yeah. That should be the thumbnail like, for this episode. I'm about that. That would be good. It's yeah. kind of like how a uh, uh, this is actually a very apt metaphor. Like how uh, <laughs> lightning bugs are signal like that they they are prepared to mate the fuck out of the the ladies out there, or maybe the the female signal or something. But it's like a mating dance they do so where they light lots. up. It's 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 just yeah. It's, it's that kind of shit. That's, okay, that's just case. like the 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 beta males on on Twitter exactly. virtue signal to attract at puss. I see. I see what you're talking about. I got you exactly right. Right, right. That's just a very glow, just okay. glowing, glowing with virtuousness as their Christ <laughs> consciousness soars and their Merkaba spins, <laughs> so, and, so and, and, and the, 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 the dimensional energies just grow higher and higher. Mm -hmm. They're, as their okay, chromosomes so multiply and they rapidly become <laughs> over fifty feet tall, <laughs> just like the ancient Egyptians. Of course. Uh, okay, so here, here we go. Here's our top definition on Urban Dictionary for virtue signaling. Saying you love or hate something to show off what a virtuous person you are instead of actually trying to fix the problem. Dumb. Jane. Wow, I hate Fox News. They're so evil and they hate women. John. Why don't you actually do something instead of just virtue signaling about it? Jane. OMG, that would be way too much work. Goes back to shit posting oh. on Twitter. Yeah, there why you don't go. you make uh, your own fucking right. news network, Jane? <laughs> all right. Yeah. So, so, so I have like consistently like heard and reheard this definition of virtue signaling. Mm -hmm. I always forget it. So uh, I'm just going to give you one and see mm -hmm. if that, this is true. Um, okay. I hate starving African children. I is that is that virtue signaling? Because I hate um, how starving they are. In a in a way, you. I mean, it sounds like you hate them as opposed to you hate the the poor conditions that they live in. I, uh, yeah, uh, they make me feel bad with their with their insistence on not eating anything. That is a yeah, that is why a don't miscalculation. They just eat some food. They're over. They're well, over there guilting me. Every day, <laughs> and it, it makes me it makes me hard to enjoy all the luxuries in my life. Oh, it you makes know, me you know hard I mean. if you know what I mean. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's, no, yeah. that yeah, I guess <laughs> good. Uh, how quickly well, you, have, you guys uh, have descended? Just that was fast. So. 
<laughs> so, okay, so the, the, the whole point of virtue signaling is not to feel good yourself. Well, I mean, it, it sort of is, but it is to make people think that you're cool or good for, for whatever reason, like, you would want to do that. And uh, this, is, this is run rampant in our society these days, Absolutely. and it's like... It's like absolutely everywhere, everybody's, including me. I'm sure, I'm well, sure we've all, all done right. it. What, some what is I'm the doing it right between... now by being on the PCP and letting everyone know <laughs> what a cool guy I am. Indeed, indeed. Uh, is, is part of it like like you aren't actually doing anything good? Cause like, yes, it is. Yes, okay. it is. That's a key component here. Yeah. Like you, sometimes right. you don't even have to believe what you're saying. Is just you doing it so that uh, others, pe- uh, people I w- would just I would I gotta... say that's a requirement. I think it's like... You... Yeah, that's the yeah. difference like, between virtue signaling and actually. You know, well, no, you can virtue signal. signal by like trying to amplify what you already believe. But there's tons of people yeah. who just be like, "I want to gain uh, social favor in some way, mm-hmm. usually online, mm-hmm. a lot of the times on Twitter." So I'm going to either echo or project a sentiment that is popular in order to align myself with this popular perception to make myself look better by by osmosis. Yeah, I, yeah, I, I got that. I got my start virtue signaling uh, very <laughs> early in life. Uh, uh, when my well, when my parents, uh, my dad, I think, got me a Backstreet Boys CD, and I was yeah. jam- I was jamming out to it. I never wanna hear you say I mm-hmm. want it that way. Mm. Yeah, it was a smooth, it was a smooth and silky jam. But I but I came to realize that the kids at my school were over the Backstreet Boys, and that was not cool. That was something <laughs> the girls liked, and cool kids didn't like that. Yeah, so. Yeah. So one day I told my dad, and the, he was like, "He was like, hey, you want to put on Backstreet?" I was like, "No, dad, I don't like the Backstreet Boys. They're gay." And my dad, well, and my dad fucking called me. He was like, "You like them? They're just not very popular." And I was like, "It cut me to the core because it was absolutely true, but I couldn't admit it." Now that is that is definitely in a sense similar to virtue signaling, but but specifically this would it would relate to like trying pressure. to make you look virtu- morally superior. The virtue of being cool and not liking things <laughs> right. that are okay. that society has deemed are for girls and gay. In uh, that okay, in that case you're absolutely wait, right. By the way, I, I also had an in sync CD yeah, yeah. that we, we bought simultaneously. Yeah, yeah, to we, the each had one. Boys. we each had one. Yeah, we were jamming. Yeah, oh, we were jamming to those. <laughs> so, uh, so where does um, giving to charity? so that you can say, I give to charity. Does that fall into the same Absolutely. thing? I mean, you, you are giving to charity, so that is, like, a real action you're doing. But, like, it depends. It's, oh, the, the a, lot giving, of, a lot of it depends on your motivation. The giving like, to charity isn't so much virtue signaling. It's making sure everyone knows that you did it. That's the right, virtue right. signaling right. part. But let me let me give you a great example from, from recent days of, of, like, exactly what a virtue signaler is. Like, when I think virtue signaler, I think male feminist. Almost immediately, that's where my mind goes. And, like, who... Just think, like, Harvey Weinstein, big leftist. Turns out he's basically a rapist or something. That is a classic virtue signaler right there. It's these guys with these duplicitous motives. Like, like again, like male feminists who go on and on about how much they love women and they want to fight for women's rights, but their end game is is to fuck women. That That's their goal. But they're going about it in such a way so as to, like, do well, it through doing, virtue. They're doing the popular thing to get closer to what they uh, want. What, what really politicians. bothers me, oh, what really bothers me yeah. when people virtue signal is, like, they pretend like they're saying something, like, uh, non-mainstream, something edgy and risky, and, like, oh, they're gonna get in trouble for saying that, but, like, they say the most popular, mundane, yeah. acceptable yeah. shit. Yep. Uh, an un- unpopular opinion, but I don't think people should be ostracized for their <laughs> sexual preferences. Right. Society. Oh, I mean, just Slow like, it down. Okay, yeah. That's yeah. such an unpopular. You know, okay, no, I'm in the minority here. That. We, we you know what's funny about this whole of thing? Unpopular opinions. I guess we're all virtue signalers. <laughs> I have a, <laughs> I have a gay friend. Hope I don't get stoned in the town square. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you know, but I, it's, oh, it's, but it's I'm funny. gonna get stoned in the town square if you know what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> legalize, <laughs> bro. <laughs> unpopular opinion, but legalize <laughs> weed, bro. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I. Uh, oh, it's funny because a lot of these issues. Now, so I, 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 I don't want to be insensitive to, to, to people's lived experiences, oh, but a lot, of these, a lot of these sorts of unpopular opinions, I mean, I'm, I'm sure you guys will generally agree with this, are things that people, like, are no longer problems. Like, for example, like, a, a gay marriage was legalized, what, like, like, seven years ago? So that's, like, not, that's not a long time. But the well, fact not everywhere. is... Well, it, no, it, it federally, Dude, it has been you know legalized. what the problem is? I'm going I'm gonna, I'm gonna to interject okay, yeah. right oh, here. Oh, right, you know, okay. You know what the problem is? It's not even that these things aren't a problem anymore. It's that you have a bunch of people mm-hmm. who ardently believe in these things. 
Um, sure. Like they believe in gay and like, you know, gay marriage and LGBT rights and all that stuff. Right. Mm-hmm. And that's all, mm-hmm. those are all good things to fight. Right. For. We all, we would all support those in general. Here's I think. the problem yeah. with mm-hmm. virtue signaling is that when you go on Twitter and you tell, tell everybody about it, everybody who's on Twitter already agrees with you. So it's a circle jerk on Twitter to get all the people you want to like you to like you because you share their opinions. Whereas you actually want mm. to do something about that. You'd have to like go somewhere besides Twitter where people don't believe these things and state your case and try and well, change here's, minds. Okay, here's here's a great thing. I've been watching, I've, I've, I've watched for a long time now, Sam Harris's podcast, the Waking Up podcast. And one of his episodes was he brought on this guy, I can't remember his name, but like the whole point of the episode was like doing the most good with your life. How do you do practical oh my good? Oh God, could there be and a more Nate podcast ever? I, I know. It's, it's, <laughs> Sam Harris is like exactly me. He's like literally me. Uh, so like the whole point of this is to like mathematically determine what is the best way to do the most good with your money, which is the exact opposite of virtue signaling. It is the mathematical you, you other can't, You extreme. can't see me smirking and shaking my head right now, yeah. but know that I'm smirking <laughs> and shaking my head right now. Good. That's what I want. <laughs> That's what I want the people to do when they hear me speak. So, like, and what was determined throughout this was that for, for like, for your buck, the best you can do to, like, su- to help people is to buy mosquito nets for, like, sub-Saharan Africa, I think, or maybe it was, like, South America. Somewhere where, like, malaria, I think, was, like, a big deal. And, and really? mosquito nets would prevent that. Like, that, that was mathematically the best thing you can do to save the most human life on the planet Jesus. that is like and, and and that could change for sure like let's yeah. say the mosquitoes die then you would find something else that's like the best way to yeah once you know, once the mosquito people. problem has been curbed the uh which you know, it the, will the, be the, the, the supply and demand curve will shift and you gotta you gotta keep up with it i got that's you. right if you want to do the most good yeah, that, yeah that's yeah. right that's right sure. and uh like that's like that that's the real shit and so for just for example like sam harris was like you know what okay this is good i'm going to immediately start giving like x amount of money to this charity, because like he, he's he's a pure like rational, scientifically minded guy, of course. So he's just giving his money there. And if I was so inclined to give my money to anyone, I would probably feel like that would be the right thing to do. You know, give give to those people, or of course, you know, just engage in capitalism in general, which is not not really the same. It's just like how you build a functioning economy. Uh, but yeah, that's like that is the good stuff. That's what I want to see. And I got no time for people and their personal little issues, like uh, like like for example. Feminists in America complaining about how women are, are uh, uh, there's a problem with ACs being too cold. Like, I actually sympathize <sighs> with that immensely. I hate when it's too cold uh, in office buildings. Then, like, men of uh, internal higher body temperature. Like, yeah. I get it, and yeah. I'm with you on that. But let's not forget that literally every woman in Saudi Arabia is a slave for the, for the <laughs> most part. Like, all of them. All yeah. of them. Well, it's, it's fun how we don't talk about that at all. Well, it's the, I mean... Mm-hmm. I think the AC thing is like it's not it's not like like the fact that there are worse I support problems. Their, I support their struggle. Yeah, I, yeah. yeah. The no, fact I'm, that there I'm, are worse problems does not. It was sexist. Like, like the, the, okay, it's a problem. Okay, mm-hmm, like hey, mm-hmm. it's too cold. I would prefer it to be warmer. Okay, sure, that's an issue. We can fix that. But don't go out of your way and claim it. Oh, I mean, it's sexist against. I mean, I, I, get, I get. I mean, I guess it is a gendered offended. problem mm-hmm. in that like. Like a, a st- statistically, probably management okay. of most places is male, and they're but probably the ones making the decision. So, like, would, it, it is a gendered argue, issue. I would argue it's Maybe, a gendered it's issue, but not a sexist issue. There's uh, a difference. Uh, not there. necessarily. I mean, it no, depends on how you absolutely. frame the. It, it it's depends not, on how you frame it. Like, if you say that only men's, you know, quote unquote, like lived experience is used to determine the correct temperature for inside yeah. the office building, I and mean, we just like don't care about the women because they're the minority. If they I just mean, that went is, to like someone who works the AC and be like, "Hey, could you raise it a little bit?" I, I'm sure they would have raised it a little bit. But the goddamn patriarchy won't allow it, man. I, I mean, it simply I mean, will not. Yeah, <laughs> like, like, allow ob- this. like what it comes down to is that, like, obviously every employee's input should count the same. Yeah, and, like everyone's right, comfort. Right should be valued equally so like mm-hmm. it, yeah, yeah um and it thinks and, 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 to... and if they're not being then that mm-hmm. is sexist but like yeah 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 i i and, doubt that they're saying fuck the women's opinion we don't care yeah uh, but uh, there is a certain temperature that will be know, the middle range of the comfort level, and people just need to attune themselves to whatever that is. Realistically speaking, you know, you gotta. Do you, you know gotta what compromise a, an example of virtue signaling would be? Somebody mm. who runs like an office of like three mm-hmm. people and goes on Twitter. He's like, I turn, I changed my AC today because I care about my female employees. Give me hundreds of thousands of retweets, please. Yeah, that's you, virtue signaling right there. 
Especially because, like, again, mathematically speaking, what if two of your employees are male? Like, it actually makes sense to do the most good for the world to make it, like, a temperature that, you know, is the most comfortable for the most number of people. Like, just as an example, I'm not saying you should always, you know, cater to men. I'm just saying, mathematically speaking, it makes the most sense, and that's that's you, the way we should operate. Do you think a way yeah. to, to determine virtue signaling is, like, the, the, the percentage of people who respond to what you said with, uh, yeah, all right, Ooh, yeah. whatever... <laughs> Fine. Like if they, if you say that, the more people who say that to what you say, that makes it more virtue signaling than than less. Indifference is um, the answer. <laughs> it's hard to say because it depends on who you're projecting to. There's a lot of people who lap that shit up. Like you, if you, I would you cast mm. that net into the right audience. Everyone's gonna be like, oh, you're so great, you're so good. Like every time you know a uh, a a. Like, this whole, like, Me Too thing, like, it's a huge problem, but mm -hmm. every time mm -hmm. another celebrity comes out, be like, something happened to me at some point by somebody. This is bad. And everyone's like, oh, you're so brave. Well, you, you know, the real problem. About it. And it's like, well, it's why not, don't you it's, drop it's the name? It's less and less brave Let's solve the, the more problem. you do it. Yeah, the right. more it happens, the less brave you are. And you're not brave for not dropping names. If you and, know exactly the, who fucking did it and you're going to keep letting them go on and continue to harass other people, you're not brave. Mm -hmm. You're looking for social credit. Fuck you. I have Entirely no respect true. for you. Entirely true. And the thing I hate about I, I don't I don't hate the movement, but the, the thing that is a problem about it is that so many people like just under this heading of me too, like everyone's thing gets lumped in together as like equally bad. Like you could have been legal literally raped by Harvey Weinstein, or you could have had like your butt touched by Al Franken, or you could have had like a coworker make a sexually charged joke to someone else not directed at you, and these would all be lumped under me too. My life is hell, you know, I have experienced deep sexual like the problem is not that these things that 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 you're complaining about these things. Each of them is fine and should be treated with a level of 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 uh, respect. The, but the, the issue here is proportionality. That is my favorite word in the world. Proportionality. Just like I was saying before about how the the women AC thing, like that that you could take that as a problem. I understand. I'm willing to talk about that. But also Saudi Arabia, full of litter. All the women are slaves. All of them, basically. And uh, uh like like proportionality wise speaking. We should talk about that a lot more. That's like the big deal that uh, that really matters. Right. Uh, yeah, but yeah. like Saudi Arabia is really far away. But like the AC I, I knob know, is right I here. Know. It's right here in my in my house. And, uh, I understand. And you can't I twist understand. it. You have to claim patriarchy for someone else to twist it. Well, well, let's. I mean, Alexa is a woman, and she's the one really in charge of all our computers and environmental controls these days. So, yeah, Alexa. Alexa. Uh, it, be the patriarchy. Maybe it's internalized patriarchy or internalized misogyny on, on Alexa's part. You know Probably. what other sort uh, of virtue signaling I really dislike? Mm -hmm. Like uh, someone, let's say, you know, they're sharing uh, an experience, of maybe a negative one, something bad that happened to them. Um, mm -hmm. You know, that's fine. You, 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 sometimes you need to vent. Sometimes you just want to share a story and that that's perfectly fine. But then someone else takes your story and then runs with it, puts it on blast and like, look at me, what a good person I am for like making this public and we should all stop this horrible thing from happening to people. And then they make it their own problem. If you mean, are you saying else's. they're like just lying and like taking other people's stories to gain the social credit? Well, no, no, not lying rather than like, mm -hmm. uh, like, look at me how, how good I am. I'm helping this person. Oh, are you saying uh, oh, by sharing instead, I instead get of it. virtue I get signaling, it. they're virtue hijacking? They're like hijacking your right. point and, and making it about them? They're like... Like turning someone else into like a symbol of like, mm -hmm. uh, they're of, using like, your struggle as a prop for their virtue. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's the, a classic, dude, the whole disgusting. Thing. <laughs> the whole idea of like of like retweeting and sharing and liking and stuff like that is just it it um, what's the word? Uh, it enables accommodates all this. Virtue, uh, virtue signaling to happen because yeah. it's like it's very mm -hmm. easy to just put someone else's statement and on your thing. And say, look at what I believe. What look at what yeah. I agree yep. with. Like it's fine to sometimes just uh, share certain stories that you want to make people aware, but like don't don't make it your battle. Kind it's of. it's like. really just a, 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 a an obnoxiousness slider. Like you can you can be a good person and say, hey, you should you should help this charity or this thing or this guy's got a Kickstarter to get medical funds mm -hmm. or whatever, and you you, you know you reshare it or whatever because you care and you want people to know about it. But mm -hmm. there's just it's just like the the more 
the more you're putting yourself in the in the picture frame of like, hey, look, it's me who's doing all this. It's right, me yeah, who's yeah. showing you this. And that's what it's let's, all about. That's let's, what this is all about. Let's not mince words about this. These days, virtue signaling is big fucking business, right? Like you can oh, be course. you can be financially successful. You can you can make like a <laughs> living. No, no. You can make a living. If you invent the right hashtag and are active enough in a hashtag, you can be like hashtag famous because you made the right hashtag that embodies some social issue that enough people want to jump on the bandwagon for and and fucking and fucking like be be up on in a Twitter arms race about. Oh, you know, for like, sure. Yeah. Like, Absolutely. I, I, and, and it's and it's like it's like just just showing showing that you support an issue enough can make you famous can make you can make people like want to support you based on that so like yeah vir- like you can make a living virtue signaling if you're if you're smart about it and if you're you can, if, and if and if you can get like a following based on it when <laughs> when discussion gets wide enough about it you can you can monetize it so you can get monetized thickness i mean of the right right you know I mean, what i'm saying i mean that's what i mean this is I'm kind of I'm kind of going I'm going broad with this, but that's kind of mm-hmm, what like mm-hmm. that's kind of what like fucking YouTubers that like that's that's what like someone like Sargon of Akkad does is they just virtue sure, signal sure. their they, what they what they perceive as virtues and like people just like pick up on those and like yes I this is a very virtuous uh, person mm-hmm. I want to ally myself with it I mean this is like this is what all pundits do this is what like every every right, YouTuber like blog pundit it, or something does they're out there just thing. just putting their opinions out there showing that they support the right issues and then the other people that support those issues want to be like of, yeah me too I, this person is is but, powerful. This person is influential, and, and I want to show, and I, and I want to show myself to be in alliance with them. And I'll do that and, whenever way I can. I'll retweet their shit. I'll, I'll back them. I'll, I'll like, yes, I want to show that I am also on this bandwagon, and that's I, I, what it's all about. I, I, I really, because like thinking about that, like everybody is basically a virtue signaler in some fashion. Mm-hmm. Um, sure, sure. Does that does that mean virtue signaling is not really that bad, and it's just sometimes people take it? To an obnoxious well, degree, I I think what the I, I don't I, I think it is one of these things that is almost a fundamental human like desire or tendency, but that doesn't make it good. You know, it, it would be good if we could stop doing it and just like be I, objective about I think things. I do is think there's possible? a difference between between uh, fighting for a cause or like trying mm-hmm. to to uh, spread not, not even awareness, but like just discuss things. There's a difference between. Ha- having a debate or a discussion and trying to just talk about a certain thing and virtue signaling, right? Because, yeah. like, if somebody... Like, to go back to a pundit, if a pundit talks about an issue and, like, hammers away at it all the time because they truly believe this is a big problem and it yeah. needs to be addressed more, that's <clears throat> different than that same pundit going on and making a big deal about whatever's popular at the time in order to bolster their own self-image. Yeah. Well, you know, it's 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 a creeping sure. thing, really. Because, like, the, the real issue with virtue signaling generally is it is catering to an audience and yeah. like every and it's, every and it's worse because there's money involved because mm-hmm. people will pay you to cater to talk about the thing that bothers them yeah it's just it's just kind of by nature of of the business right. of, it, of it just ties, like having someone with opinions a lot into, to victim culture right that's true. Be- because that's true. in order, in order to be like, it's because we have this weird kind of social dynamic now where being a victim is virtuous. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So they tie together a lot nowadays. Like, you but know, it's just I've, like I've been wronged. Look how bad this thing is. We need to solve this problem because I've been wronged. Now, please give me money to make up for the fact that society shortchanged me in X, be, but, in X way. Yeah, sure. But because we've got like a uh, uh, you know social media in the way that we do now, it's so easy for people to like keep catering to their audience, and it, it it just like things spiral out of control, and they just keep going down a rabbit hole where you got guys like I don't know, like there was some guy on like a, Joe Rogan's podcast recently who like was a self avowed like big SJW guy, and then he was there saying like yeah that like and he, he had supposedly like stopped doing that or whatever. And I'm taking him at his word. I don't really know who he is or anything. And he was just, and Joe was like with him on it. So he was like, yeah, man, like I just kept like retweeting the same people. I just kept doing it and doing it because like everyone around me was like, yeah, this is it. This is right. We got to keep doing this shit. There's no alternative facts to be considered or, or other viewpoints or whatever. So like I, I, I almost want to give people credit or not, not give them credit, but like not lambast them too harshly for this because just by the nature of the way that our interactions work these days oh, it is yeah. almost no, inevitable yeah. that we fall into these i was pits. gonna make so, this yeah. point at some That's point true. too yeah. that this is That's a true. huge this is 
I don't, I'm not going to say this is a mm -hmm. product of social media, but it's absolutely uh, spiraled out of control the way it has because of the way social media works. Like social media yeah. first enables this to happen at scale, Vir right? Virtue, if you're, if you're, virtue you can't virtue just, signal in person very effectively. Yeah, you have like five just, or ten people. Of course, you can virtue jerk signaling off to. on social media is highly incentivized socially yeah. as well yeah. as financially. Well, and even that's the why algorithm does because as you continue to virtue signal and like you show support for that content all these algorithms just show you more of that stuff. So you're just going to keep seeing more of it. It's just going to, and then you're, you be have this little like social bubble because you're only going to interact and you're only going to see people who talk about these topics and it's you going know what? to feel well, you know like a, a bigger one? problem but, to you. Let me, let me give you a big example that's happening right now. Okay. And it's net neutrality. And I think that we might actually disagree on this to some degree because I'm actually not 100% in favor of net neutrality all the way. Whoa. But let's 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 discuss this. So so right right now, a lot of people just assume that net neutrality is obviously the best thing, obviously. Yeah. And I, I feel it a, sort of a fits big under discussion this umbrella. About this recently too, and was aware oh, yeah? of new okay. facts that I was not aware of. Okay, uh, so which, maybe we'll both learn something. Um, yeah. Well, I'm, I'm not gonna learn anything. It is, <laughs> it's super. It's. I think you're. I was gonna bring up net neutrality at some point as well, and I think it's a great mm. example of what we're talking about right now. Yeah. Is yeah. because net neutrality. Uh, the issue there's huge issues with re revoking title two status but i think so the right. conversation has become uh that title two has become synonymous with net neutrality when net neutrality is just a subset of what title two means for internet regulation right and right. because we have so many people who are defenders of net neutrality myself included uh we nobody talks about the other uh effects of having a title II classified internet there's a lot right, more of course. regulation on uh building out infrastructure and stuff and smaller me, startup companies are have more difficulty let me let me throw this at you regarding regarding net neutrality everybody so like th this is this is just an example about uh, you fair viewer you probably have heard almost nothing except that net neutrality is great uh, by people online and that it all it is is super important that we keep it uh, with its title II status and and all that bullshit you've probably heard nothing but that but let me raise this this point to it Right now, net neutrality enforces that all internet traffic uh, go along the same exact channels, that there can be no delineation between uh, you know, different types of, of pipelines. It all has to go through the same series of tubes. Therefore, things that uh, take up a lot of data, for example, the gigantic advent of online HD streaming these days has completely changed the game for how much uh, data is demanded per capita at any one time. And like, it is like, I'm not, I don't think it's the majority, but it's really getting up there to be like a huge percentage of like Netflix, all internet Netflix data account traffic for, accounts for like 40 percent of internet bandwidth exactly exactly <clears throat> and and so considering that everybody let's say you fair viewer are just trying to watch you're just trying to go online you're trying to go to fucking your oh, some website to do something uh you know big dicks.com your your favorite website you're just trying to get maybe, there just maybe you're headed on. over I maybe you're kind of if i'm going to big dicks.com i definitely <laughs> want some 4k hdr well well, well let's let's dicks. use an example we can all agree <laughs> These are on artistic maybe, photographs let's, let's use an example <laughs> yeah, we can sure. all agree on maybe you're headed over to your favorite hub for all your favorite content on the internet patreon.com slash ben saying what's been going on I, I, I yeah really right we're just gonna say sync comics because that would make more sense you're like uh, your life is an I absolute shambles. It's, it's in shambles. And it's the only place you can take solace in this cruel world is on patreon.com slash Ben Saint. That's where you, you need know, to be. You know, you know. Be a, you know you'll find a friend there. <laughs> okay. For everybody so, knows your name. For a price. For a <laughs> price. For a, for a price, of course. He doesn't come cheap. Okay, so, so you're, you're, you're just going to some bullshit website that's not an HD video streaming website. That, that's the point I'm trying to get to. Okay, so you, you go there and the page is loading really slow and you think, why might this be? And then you realize realize like it's the season finale it's the series finale of game of thrones or something it just came out and everyone in the world is using netflix right now to try to get that fucking you know watch that fucking video that just came out and so the internet is just down like around you because everyone is demanding so much data right now that it's a fucking nightmare now does that model necessarily make more sense than one where there are indeed separated lines, where something like Netflix has a dedicated line, and then something like you know your your static web page loading service that has its own dedicated line. Now I'm not saying they necessarily should be charging different rates or any any of that bullshit. I'm just saying that uh, net neutrality enforces that everything uses the exact same pipeline, and that does not necessarily demand or, or um, 
create the best environment for all users. It does not necessarily not, optimize I happiness think for there's everyone. Not absolutely, no, no, there's not absolutely a discussion to be had about how to best mm -hmm. optimize, uh, you know, bandwidth and stuff like this because right, there, right. you have these heavy band. The problem is by revoking, and this is the argument for net neutrality, mm -hmm. is that by revoking Title II, uh, we can optimize like that, but we can also do all this other Kane shit, which well, that's, Comcast that's and the Horizon issue, have yeah, do, do you expect mm -hmm. like, companies to not milk neutrality. it as much as they can? Like, do you know there's like, I think there's no net They've neutrality They've already started in doing it. There's already examples of them doing it. It's uh, I mean, it's if you, a couple years ago, Comcast and Verizon throttled um, yeah, Netflix. Yeah, what was it? it was, they they yep, throttled yep. Netflix until Netflix started paying them extra money to cover their bandwidth costs. And and then you, there's like graphs of like this the speed slowing down significantly. Then the date Netflix started paying, it all went back up, and both these companies colluded to basically kneecap the company and extort them for money. Well, okay, I mean, b business is business, and I get I get them wanting to do to be able to do those sorts of things, or how businesses find an equilibrium of power. But like again, you need well, competitors to drive down well, prices. Well, that, well that's, have, isn't and that's isn't the that, problem right now? Is isn't that, that collusion no, and monopoly right. monopolizing and you know trusts? Aren't trusts illegal? Isn't isn't that why we busted all those trusts back in the days of Teddy Roosevelt or whatever? <laughs> it, it's it, to some degree, yes. To some degree, you're absolutely right, and I totally agree with all of these things. Uh, uh, you know, in practice, I, I, I'm sort of being I um an idealist about like what I would, I would like. To I would see, love to know? have a free market of of competition in the um, in the space of ISPs and stuff. Uh, mm -hmm. The problem is right now we don't have the infrastructure to do it. Okay, but it's just that the problem is, the, the, the origin of this problem was government regulation because there used to be a lot of little uh, ISP providers until things got consolidated and, like, AT&T was, like, the big one that just took over everything so as to, like, supposedly to streamline the process and to make things more efficient in the development of, like, phone line in, uh, infrastructure at the time and now, you know, a lot of... Uh, right, no, no, uh, the problem right now is that government regulations and, like, letting these companies lobby and basically yeah, dictate yeah. policy has totally fucked up any new players it's like I, I want the, i want the libertarian solution but like th this particular thing of like enforcing net neutrality is indeed like a, an extra like restriction but like uh, th that doesn't get it closer to to uh, egalitarianism i like i just want it to like all stop and us all to be free to exchange commerce in a free open way but that that's not like what this one the issue problem solves is, and it might we, be a patch. let's say we pull it all back and we, we revoked uh title two and put it back on title one and anybody can yeah. do anything my mm -hmm. concern with that is that okay the, this solution because like this is what people are talking about let's get rid of all the legislation and yeah mm -hmm. if comcast and verizon and all these fucks decide to like make the internet terrible we're just gonna have more companies come in and take their place and mm -hmm. my my two concerns with that is one what do we do in the meantime while all these new companies magically sprout out, out of the ether? The internet's indeed, still fucked. Indeed. We're still kneecapped for the time being. And two, like if the market responds to supply and demand, like if we wait long enough and this is just how the internet is, like none of these companies are legally binded to be good people. Like you can just have another company come in and like not restricted by regulation, but be like, yeah, Verizon and Comcast are doing it. I'm going to do it too, but I'll charge five bucks less. And so there's no guarantee that the problem that we're talking about that's going to go away would mm -hmm. go away. Away. Whereas with net neutrality, it does go away. So it's a guarantee versus a hope mm -hmm. that people are going to do the right thing. And I don't trust people because people are assholes. That's understandable. That's understandable. But I think there's well, way there's way more nuance to this discussion that's being completely uh, thrown out because we're we're not talking and that's about the thing. we're not talking about Title II. We're just talking about net neutrality, which is only a small right, part right. of the impact of Title II regulations. Indeed. And and th this is the ex this is what I want to bring up. Like what we're doing right now is not virtue signaling. This is an actual discussion about the the, oh, the pros what, and cons of what these I'm gonna issues. Do, what I'm going to uh -huh. do after this is that I am going to post this uh, the, the time code of you talking about net neutrality on my okay. Twitter saying I know I was there. I know about <laughs> net neutrality. This is me and my buddies <laughs> yeah. talking about it. Even though I didn't say shit because be I so don't smart, get it. Gabe. You'll be so smart. <laughs> That'll be me virtue signaling. That's my plan. Yeah, intellectual virtue signaling. Yeah, that's cool. I like it. <laughs> Make sure you put your uh, your Patreon in there so people can give you money to help fight the good fight for net neutrality. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, that's the thing right there. Like, guys, I'm working so hard to support. Oh, you know what it reminds me of? Remember, Ben, uh, like, Mad Munchkins, like, uh, uh, her, her, like, what was it? Not her Patreon, but her, like, thing her, to, like, support like, artists in the local community or something yeah, by yeah, giving her, her, her money. Kick, her, yeah, what her the Kickstarter fuck? 
but the do... incredibly incredibly vague like goal of like yes yeah, support like local business okay she's just by gonna giving pencils. me money so i can buy things so, so i can live in businesses. my town and purchase things from my local <laughs> from my local vendors no, you know uh, you know what you know what a great example of virtue signaling that's kind of hit close to home because it's in our it's in our backyard Uh-oh. is okay. all these people being like oh i got demonetized again on youtube yeah please give me money on patreon it's the only way i can survive mm. Mm. Uh, that's uh, virtue signaling right there. Tom, didn't didn't you say that exact same thing? I no no. I did I I did uh I I keep bitching about it, but I'm not like mm-hmm. I never post my Patreon link ever. I think I did once <laughs> as a joke. Okay, but, okay. But but okay. but I do say so. it's funny, there's this <laughs> oh, one it's guy okay when it's a joke though. <laughs> yeah. oh, I, I will agree that one time I'm being hypocritical. But um well, it's, fair it's funny. Well, I mean I don't every, I don't blame Every time I, I bitch about like being demonetized, I'm not bitching I did it about just now. I not I making my money. fucking Patreon like, here's minutes thing. ago. Mm-hmm. Like, like, if I, none of these videos I post are gonna make any money, anyways, they're gonna make like a dollar. Like, I don't even fucking. I if I should just turn mm-hmm. off monetization on my channel entirely because I make nothing. Yeah. It's more the yeah. principle of the matter that pisses me off. Oh, it absolutely, is. absolutely. Yeah. But but um, it's funny because this one guy keeps resp- uh, replying to all of my posts with my Patreon link. I'm like, dude, <laughs> I'm not posting it because oh. I, I, I'm now not there's... trying to. I'm not trying to virtue signal. I'm trying to say, look how dumb this is. But um, but there are people that, who do that who just make a big deal about it, and like I get it, I get that it's a huge problem, and but to there's there's a point where like I think there are some people who like have like hundreds of thousands of subscribers and just mm-hmm. lost fifty percent of their income, and that's all yeah. the money they were making, and they're yeah. like shit, guys, uh, I'm opening a Patreon, could you help me? I don't know yeah. what I'm gonna do if I don't have this. And then and there's the people who jump well. on that bandwagon and are like, this is a good way to get on this narrative and get some extra Patreon. Yeah, yeah. 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 I mean, if we could look at because it, it is legit for some people. Because it is legit for some mm-hmm. people, for but sure. it's also a convenient excuse. And like, I mean, that's the whole thing. Not, There's just like a big trickle down out, effect. Um, I said, but now Patreon's kind of a bit fucked as well. So, Patreon. I mean, is, it's getting there. Patreon it's getting is a, there. okay. As much as I depend upon it, uh, Patreon is a terrible company, and I wish there were an alternative. Uh, so yeah, these much. these changes, these changes that are happening on Patreon, that definitely are to some degree going to make people not want to use it uh, as uh, much. Yeah. Like there are people who've already people lost are asking me for alternatives for this. Yeah, I, I've lost a couple bucks so far, and I mean, I, it's going to hit on the yeah. 18th, I believe, is when the fees, like the bill, comes for the it's, for the patrons. It's, so it's we will thing, see them leave. It's a thing that's like it's not. It doesn't. Yeah, like like more of the fee is the fee is putting like part of the fee is being put onto the the the, the patrons rather than mm-hmm. taken out of the of the creators cut, and like it's a pretty small percentage, but it's also got like a small tack on. It's like two point nine percent plus like thirty five. Yeah. So for a one dollar pledge, that it bumps it up from like one dollar to like a dollar forty, which is right, and that's like, a forty percent increase. And yeah. the thing that sucks is that like let's say because the the argument that everyone's making I think is totally valid. Let's mm-hmm. say there's uh there's a guy who pledges a dollar to the PCP and a dollar to all of us. That's eleven dollars a month. He has to mm-hmm. pay that forty cent fee on each one. So now yeah. he's, right. he's right. paying fifteen sixteen dollars. It's really. It, it's really, it's really, it's really much more harshly punishing like low I do, level patrons. And I do I don't want to point out though, why. that like th- th- this fee, this cost has always been there, and so yeah. we were just taking it out of our income, which I was so fine I, with. Yeah, I was pretty fine with it. Like I, 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 that, I understood that going in. I don't. I, mean, I, would, I, actually, I would rather. I would rather I take that lose. Back. I would rather I lose like a it. cut. I would rather lose a cut of a patron's pledge than dissuade them from pledging at all because Here's, they're uncomfortable. Oh, well, paying I, I hear fees. what you're saying. Nate, I just wish things had been like this from the start and people knew right, what they were no, signing up for. That would Nate, be. Here's my thing, though. Yeah. Here's my question, because mm-hmm. like, if you know, because I, I looked at the numbers and I'm dumb. I don't yeah, know math. Yeah. You're smart. Um, because <laughs> the numbers that Patreon threw out is that we made what like eighty to eighty-eight percent of each dollar, and that was. What they were talking like that was the number before, and now it's ninety five. Yeah, that's about right. That's because about I don't right. understand where if if it's the 80%, same eighty percent. That seems low. Well, the thing is, is like if we were making eighty percent at the low end before, but now one dollar patrons have to pay forty percent more. It's, it's isn't because... Patreon making more money? Well, no, like, no, no, where's no, the no, 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 no. They're coming from. Patreon is taking the same amount. They they pay. They need the more money because mm-hmm. they're changing the infrastructure so that they it's uh, the the thing is more like a subscription service where the person who pledges um, gets paid on the same time every month that they pledged. Well, and to do that, they need more. They need to do more transactions, which means higher transaction fees. I, I wasn't so, aware that that was changing. 
So there uh, is there is more money being thing. taken total now, right? Also, like, that's I, I actually, more, I, I, I do not think that's accurate. Taken, think more that's money accurate. is being taken in total, oh, well, but the yes, money that's right, that, that's right. that is being taken is used to pay for the extra transactions. Also, which, the, the percentages I mean, it, are it would make Patreon more smooth and, and less confusing. Patreon. But yeah, it yeah, does, this, it, you're, you're being slightly inaccurate. That, that's not quite right. The, the, what, what's actually no. changing is Patreon is specifically trying to change how transparent they are about how much Patreon pledges like actually are giving the money to the people you are patroning to. So when you pledge yeah, one dollar, what you're pledging is to get make to do whatever is necessary to get that one dollar to no, the, the pledge just, guy. I was just explaining that the reason the money is going up is not to get Patreon more money. They they made an update to to Correct. alleviate concerns, and I read that and I was like, okay, I like the the the, the main goal was to make Patreon itself work more smoothly and less confusingly. Um, and right. they gave a, a few reasons for like the way the system is now. People like, yeah, I don't know. It's it's. I, I just want to look it up and you'll read it. Let, I'll lay this case out real simple for you. Before Patreon used to like, if you pledged a dollar, what uh, you, you would send in a dollar, and Patreon and the money, you know, and like the people you were patroning to, they'd figure out what fees they need to pay to get whatever's left of that pledge to the person that you're patroning to. Now what they're doing is they're making sure. That uh, okay, so ninety five percent of that one dollar goes to the Patreon person, and then five percent of your pledge goes to Patreon as their earnings, and then off of your back, you do whatever's necessary to pay those fees, that like forty cents or whatever, to get that money to I where mean, it needs to go. That's, that's also true, but like that. Yeah. The reason that that is like the thing is they wanted to to like dress it up nice because the their main thing for was the, they for the artists. They're for the artists. They yeah, are, they're for yeah. the artists. They wanted to be like like oh we're gonna give the creators more money, make sure that we're taking less of off of your mm -hmm. paycheck. That was what they led with, but the reason they're doing it at all is to change the infrastructure of the site, which just leaves them with more transaction fees that they have to give to either the creators or the, the, the pledges. And they decided to give it to the pledges. And now everyone's upset. That's I don't a, like the, well, okay. what the patron has done, but that is the reason they've done to it. To bring this back to virtue signaling, because we're, <laughs> yeah. we're getting a little caught off path now. Like, oh, don't yeah. you think that this problem has become exponentially bigger than it otherwise would have been because all these artists are virtue signaling online about how bad it is yeah. and now everyone's That's aware. That's true. Of it. Yeah. That's true. Yeah, I you know, I've I've been annoyed about it. How many people I... are depledging because they've been made aware of this where they've just saw it in their bank account, they would have been like, "Eh, that's dumb or they would have like investigated and read what Patreon said and be like, eh, that's okay. But because oh. all these people are like, this is I, evil. Yeah. Now yeah. everyone's like, I don't want to support There's, this evil company. I've been, that's not true, I've been guys. Seeing, it's just business. I've been seeing a lot of comic people on Twitter who are like railing against it. And like on the one hand, like I'm not happy Fucking about retards. it. Because I yeah. am, I do think that it has a, a pretty good chance to de-incentivize people from pledging and, and put people off and, and could hurt me. But on the other hand, like to go to go out and be like, guys, Patreon is evil. Like, well, don't I mean, bite the I, hand that feeds I, yeah, you. Yeah, I, I still like. I don't. I don't want to. My goal is not to dissuade people from from doing it. I mean, I I don't want them to jump into it and then get hit with a bunch of extra fees they weren't expecting. But like, you know, I just as long as it's transparent Dude, people, and they know what they're pledging for. Like, I, of course, I want so, people to do it. You know, that's my people fucking livelihood. People are so people are so retarded when it comes to like fees and business and whatever. I have I feel like I have a fundamentally different view from like a lot of my fellow millennials out there mm. like guys business is business sometimes businesses rearrange the way that their cost structures are working sometimes they just have to make changes and and they they are telling you what the changes so you can say you know what this is not what i want to do i'm going to stop doing this it is not evil to yeah. change your business model they are simply yeah. adjusting things and if you don't like it fucking leave well yeah. from that, it's from not that evil. perspective because i agree with you you know like they have to do what they have to do to make the business work and right. like there are there are questions of ethics that we can ask i don't think sure, there's a sure. but uh but like again like that's it's not a question of ethics why they're doing it i think the the problem with patreon doing mm -hmm. this is that they've tried to spin it to make them look like good guys and not just be like this is a business decision because i think yeah. they're just like we're that's the, what we, i hate about we patreon. have to adjust for the market and this is how we're going to do it would have been a lot better than like hey guys we really want to make sure you get as much money as possible because we love you so much patreon so, are the biggest so fucking daddy, virtue signalers around you're right you're like, right that's that's the part that yeah. really pissed me off like like i don't know like like Jack Conte really kind of just creeps me out. Jack Conte, biggest <laughs> yeah. virtual, biggest virtual they, signal in the world, and, and they, devout hater of all pornography. Just, Patreon just has like pornography. Patreon has 
in, uh, an infamous, I mean, at least among the PCP, among an infamous us, yeah. uh, email writer who sends us... Yeah. You know, Taryn. Um, every, Taryn. Every single time it's like some sort of face. announcement. <laughs> yeah, and she's like talking to us like we're four-year-olds. Like, oh, we're God, a Patreon. We love creators like you. It's like... Oh, sad. It, it, okay, it makes me mad. <laughs> it makes me mad, and it That's feels disingenuous been, huh? because, hmm. because Patreon, like, yeah, like... To me and like to us, like they're this is like they're not a community. Like we don't interact with the Patreon community. They're just a service. Dude, like they PayPal. want you to be in that community so bad so but that you'll keep community? recirculating. What so, the, so that you'll, you'll pledge to your friends and then all the money will continuously recycle and then Patreon just draws more but money I off the top of all of it. I literally don't know what community they're talking about. <laughs> I don't know. They, I don't know. They they really just they feel they feel like uh, I don't know. They like xylophones to, and, to and them, ukuleles. To like, to, it's like from their perspective, or at least how they wish it was. It's like all the people that have patrons are like their family, and they're all their children, and they're yeah, all kinda. work, and we're all working together for the common goal of making Patreon. And they, a great, and they need no. to dictate what's good and what's bad art, but, and but they need to make sure. It is. And I really do they're, not like the attitude they cop that like I'm supposed to buy into this narrative. Let's of just, we're all let's on the just, same side. No, you're a service that I use. You should be literally PayPal. PayPal is all. All these things people have been asking me like what to do if you don't want to use patreon anymore because you find this evil because you're a retarded person uh yeah. the the answer is use paypal yeah like, so you, can you can set up re- you can set up recurring payments on paypal if you want i have links to my paypal in my fucking uh, i have uh, my, my channel bar i have so. i have links to do that on my on my about page on saintcomics.com i mean i've had uh, yeah mm-hmm. it's it's, I, it's not as popular guy. but it works just as I well i mean i was using it works PayPal better. for recurring purchases before patreon even existed so like it's yeah. not like this is a new service they have like but it, but it, doesn't, day, it needs but a it code of being. We're like, how do we make money? And one of the things we were like, oh, we can make recurring payments on PayPal. I mm-hmm. guess we can try that. But it doesn't so, have that friendly face painted on it. Yeah. It does, well, it's, it's, it's not if, a creator's then helping maybe, creators Then maybe thing. that's a necessary evil. Then maybe yeah. some of these people need their hug box in order to get them on board, which maybe, I find man. really odd. But yeah. it, make, it just well, makes me mad. It just branding. makes me mad to hear from Taryn all the time because she's talking about what a great hug, hug box community. And I'm like, I have yet to receive a single hug from you, Patreon. <laughs> <laughs> Some hug um, box. I, <laughs> yeah, what the, I wanna, fuck? what the fuck? I want to talk about um, the 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 Dick Show Patreon because okay, I I don't know That's whether uh, who would agree on, mm-hmm. on, on on like where would this would stand in virtue signaling because Ooh. the reason his Patreon is gigantic yeah. is because he's writing off of the the backlash from Maddox. Like, I'm the, sure if Maddox say... wasn't. Um, yeah. Doing things against Dick and giving him reasons to, you know, to to feel like the victim. People would not be pledging to I'm, Dick as I'm much. I'm sure the, I don't no, think. the biggest. Uh, it's interesting gonna... that you bring this up, just because I I I just finished the biggest problem, like listening to it, mm. like three mm. days ago, because uh, okay. Digi told me to like get off my ass and, and listen to it. Mm-hmm. So I finally did. So I was I've actually been interested because like it just ends. The podcast just kind of ends. I'm like, what the fuck? So I I I've. I've been starting to dig in like what the fuck happened like what and then i saw dick's patreon i'm like holy fuck the man's loaded yeah yeah so the, the, the yeah, basic idea is like maddox didn't say anything and dick did so everyone went over to dick's show and dick you know s- s- uh, said all the gossip and stuff and then recently Mad- uh, maddox has like filed a lawsuit against uh dick for like um you know damages and stuff yeah and it's a yeah. big lawsuit and yeah, dick is like that. dick's patreon has blown up Considerably since then, because even people since are, like, then, really? against. yeah, of course, yeah, of course, now. because he's because he's you know the, the, I saw he was at like twenty k before. Is it like he's, he's, he's at now. almost twenty three k right now? Holy shit! Incredible. And yeah, it is like every every time Maddox every time Maddox lashes out against him, and he's done and he's done so in some really stupid and baffling ways before. True. And so I Very get true. it. Like I get how I get why Dick looks like the good guy in this. I mean, I don't even disagree with that. Okay, Maddox the, was a big asshole. Uh, but but yeah, like every time Maddox takes any action against Dick, it's like we got it's it's a fucking rush to to support Dick because fuck now, Maddox to, and and he to, and he's hugely benefited off of it. To to be fair, I'm sure the biggest Dick sucker in the world, a uh, Digi Bro, would mm. say that like a Dick has like capitalized on the opportunity and turned that gossip into a comedy show yeah and, like that's his real source of you know stuff uh, yeah. i don't know T- I tomato don't know. tomato tomato mm, mm. Uh, but I, I think we can agree the foundation yeah. here is is, so, is a sort of virtue signaling i, uh, sure uh, I think so. i have no idea what you guys are talking about i i, <laughs> no th- I think it is yeah i think dick 
I just yeah, Dick did a really good him, job. Really. Dick did a really good job of painting himself as the good guy in that conflict, and uh, he did. it, uh, it he paid did. off. I don't. Uh, yeah, you know. Uh, virtue signaling pays, guys. Once good, good, again. good, good for Once him. Again. Good for him, I suppose. Like he really yep. did monetize being a victim, and in sometimes that's appropriate. Like if you, yeah, a bit. were you know, yeah, you, you know, you know, like if I you sue someone who beat up, you up, that's like, reasonable. Uh, yeah, go on, yeah. go on. No, 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 that's fine. That's moving on. If that's okay. what we had to say about that. I, I feel like we've pretty much run a gamut here. I think we've done a lot of good stuff on on this topic, and I I'm I'm pretty pretty spent. Um, on, I just, uh, I, just I just want to say that I think uh, this discussion has really proved that all of us are just really just we have a really good nuance and understanding of this topic. We're just <laughs> we've elevated the discussion much higher than yeah. anybody else has. So if you really want to mm-hmm. if you want to enable more amazing discussions like this, please go to our Patreon and, and give us money. Yeah, uh, because Patreon. we're good slash the procrastinators, everybody. And we believe in whatever social issues you do. Absolutely. <laughs> pay, pay us enough, we'll believe whatever you want. Please support I'm, exactly. with, I'm with you. If there's, a steady, if there's a steady paycheck in it, I'll believe whatever you say. That's from Ghostbusters. That's Winston. <laughs> Is that the new Ghostbusters or the old Ghostbusters? No, no, that's the Winston, old one. Winston, the when, monkey. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. When he, he answers the ad, he answers the ad, oh, and, the rece- right. and the receptionist is like, "Do you believe in the paranormal experiences <laughs> after, like life after death, the Loch Ness monster, and UFOs?" And he's like, "If there's a steady paycheck in it, I'll believe whatever you say because he's a because he's an opportunist, but he's also got a heart of yeah, gold." Yeah, Nate, that was Winston, not women. Jesus. <laughs> Lol. Uh, okay, let's. Uh, I mean, I got I got some questions here. If we're if we're all set, I can, oh, we can I, pull up some of these yeah, questions. I'm okay to to do that. Okay, oh, here, here's a here's a, a point of order question. At the one true Henry asks, okay, why does your logo say TPC, but the podcast is PCP? Wouldn't it be TPCP? If you are the procrastinators, then it should be the procrastinators podcast. Justify yourself. Okay, okay, I'm gonna I'll I'll go on record. I think the logo probably mm-hmm. should read PCP rather than TPC. Uh, but mm-hmm. the reason it says TPC is because it stands for the Procrastinators, which is the name of our organization, whereas mm-hmm. Procrastinators think, Podcast I, is the name of the show. Indeed, I like I like TPC just because it means nice. that if we if we if we want to end the podcast and make a different show, we can. Yeah, that yeah, mm, that's yeah, true. That's true. That's true. That there are there would. are many shows under the subset under the under the heading of TPC of of the. I mean, let's let's be honest. Just just to be like we. We, we, we've talked a few times about Munchie rebranding all of this because this was all f- cobbled together without any sort of like logical thought mm-hmm. at all. We just kind of like squeezed our cheeks together and shit this out. And that's <laughs> that's the graphic design of the procrastinators in general. Wait, if, if you squeeze exactly your cheeks together true. and then shit at it out, well, you're going to get shit all over yeah, your cheeks. Just, and, yeah, no, 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 no. and that's, why, that's why we're such a fucking that, mess. That's why that, we're a uh, fucking mess. And that explains... We, where the the aesthetic is shit yeah. everywhere <laughs> all over okay. the place in places it shouldn't except, be. my metaphor except, was apt get ex- off of my case jesus yeah it was even more <laughs> apt it, than you know than you know it's it's shit everywhere except on procrastinators red bubble merch shop <laughs> where you can get all the cool not shit designs right now indeed uh so that's that that's that under the under the Swept under the rug. Yeah. What, what else we got? Back hey, where it uh, belongs. here's one. I, I don't know if this might be a quick one, but at Stumble Reel asks, any of you watch or listen to Harmon Town? Do you? Any of you guys watch that uh, show? No. I listened to like one episode. I kind of always meant to listen to it, but I haven't. Mm. So no. Also, Stumble Reel is the guy who discovered the origin of the PCP guy. That's right. That's the, the now dead PCP guy. Rest in peace. <laughs> at long last. It's forever in our hearts. Uh, and it, here's one more question from from the pity from the pity section here on uh, on Twitter. Uh, at Zach TM underscore asks, wait, oh sorry, that was the wrong person. Get fucked, Zach. Uh, it was actually <laughs> at Centerpoint360 uh, asks, what's your favorite thing to do while sick? That's an important question because you're always looking for something to do while sick. Any tips here would be very much appreciated. Sleep. Do sleep. Yeah, sleep. Yeah, sleep, and just no, doing wait, wait, my wait, own same thing. Filth. I just always roll do. around in my vomit well, and my I, shit and just, just my favorite thing to do is mm-hmm. is to have like a like a, a thing of like uh, just plain crackers and a glass of water and sit and watch uh, a show a marathon a show on a big yeah, old TV. Yeah. Marathoning anime is what I do. I don't, I don't know if this counts. My favorite thing to do while sick is to skip work. Any excuse I have to, <laughs> oh, have to go yeah. to work mm. is a ten out of ten in my book. I depending you know on, this... on how sick I am, like um, 
If I'm super sick and I can't do much, like in super high fever or whatever, then it's sleep because the, that's the only thing I can do and it makes time pass and hopefully that means when I wake up I'll feel better. Uh, but if it's like the kind of sick that I can still get out of bed and do stuff, then um, usually just like maybe play games on phone or watch videos or listen to something, something mild. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, I mean, mm-hmm. all, everything I do is just fucking sitting around on YouTube or just drawing or whatever. So I just, I, I do all the same. Nothing things. changes. Nothing, nothing, nothing changes. changes when I'm incapacitated. <laughs> nothing I'm, changes I'm pretty, between Ben being alive and dead. It's basically pretty, the same yeah, situation. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> same difference. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, should we have some Patreon questions? Absolutely. Yeah, and I've got one right here. There's still questions related to me, so I want. <laughs> Okay, go for it. Are we going to see Mage at Radcon 3, the Radconning? Where is it going to happen? Do you guys know? In in America somewhere. That's a safe to assume, I think. So no. No, no Uh, Mage. There Uh, you go. Maybe if we we kickstarted the shit out of it. We could we could fly you out. Like I mean, at with, at, uh, at one hippo. point, at one point, we were we were considering like me and Mage flying together, yeah. so it wouldn't mm-hmm. be like scary. But it, yeah. it's we don't know anything about Redcon three yet. yet so yeah. Yeah. Redcon three happen, barely even exists. So yeah, if it's, it's gonna, gonna happen during the summer, so long. If it's gonna happen during the summer, then it's a, gonna be a strict no for me because I have obligations during the summer. But <laughs> duly noted. Yeah, okay. if it's gonna happen well, at any we'll, other time, then we'll see. We'll have to discuss it. I'd um, really like it. I'd really like it if Mage we don't. We don't have there. Digi House anymore, so that that that's really been the big issue. I think if Digi still had his house, we all would have hung out again by now, probably. Possibly. Yeah. I'm glad everyone, to get out of that house. Everyone, though. I want to just expand. come to like UK and have an adventure in London. But that's so like, much more expensive for I, everyone, you know, combined. I know, but like you, like, you one day, experience England. One day we'll do the the maybe the maybe, maybe, maybe you movie. have a little bit of female. Pre- Privilege, but don't don't push your luck, all right? I don't know. Don't maybe push your luck. maybe maybe if we get you know maybe if the PCP keeps growing and we make you know we start we have more money to throw around maybe we could make Radcon Four in fucking London. Patreon.com slash the procrastinators. Uh, hey, here's a, here's a question. From One more question for me, just lounge. quickly. Uh, can okay. Major doubt me? Everyone is my children, so there you go. Okay, go ahead. There you go. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, ben, here's one for you. Uh, Delta Cullis asks, favorite vape juice? What's the um, good shit, Ben? Ooh, Red Pellis. Well, um, I've been I've been on a kick for menthol flavors. Uh, uh, I think watermelon. I, I okay. I buy on dirtcheapjuice.com most of the time, even though they're not Is that true. Cheap. Is that real? Of course you would. They're, they're, Is that actually they're, what it's called? It, it, dirt cheap juice or dirt cheap. They're not actually okay. a good deal. Like, but I but they keep <laughs> but they keep sending me every time I buy from them. They send me a little coupon for one dollar off my next order. And even okay. though that doesn't make it cheaper than the competition, I have to spend that free that dirt cheap dollar, or else right. it's a waste. So I'm fucking Damn. trapped. <laughs> they, I've got they stock got you homes. Good, man. Uh, I got watermelon. I Ice, uh, blue ice. Uh, I like I like fruit flavors with a menthol kick. I like vanilla ice. Play a <laughs> yeah. lot of do a lot of that shit. Uh, yeah. Okay, okay. Well, now my I've, nickname I... in the Patreon lounge is Mom. So that was already official. a nickname. I no, it was Nom for the Halloween. Okay, so I just it's it's official. Now, I see. <laughs> um, okay, here we go. Um, here's here's another question from One Spar, and this is relevant because this is like basically our Christmas episode. Because this will be actually this will be. There will be one, this will be out, and then next week there will be another one, and then Christmas will be, like, out a couple days after that one. But we're, we're in the season anyway. So, um, one spar asks, what do you guys want most for Christmas this year? What are you hoping that Santa I will bring you? I want to feel happy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you can't, Santa only gives gifts to good little boys, Hippo, so, uh... You're out of the running for that one. I'm a good uh, little tell boy. me, tell me who to kill, and t- 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 like I'll kill the other side. I'll kill somebody. I gotta kill somebody kill to get some- my points. <laughs> I know. I know what I want for Christmas. What's that? Yeah. Undertale two. <laughs> yes, made by Hideo Kojima, <laughs> aka Death Stranding. I can't wait. <laughs> Uh, yep. uh dude, yeah, yeah, I think Koji- this Norman might have been Reedus an edit. Is but- Asriel? <laughs> <laughs> I don't, I don't know if this was real or not, but I did see a screen cap of Hideo Kojima tweeting, "I am making Undertale 2. <laughs> <laughs> probably a lie, probably a lie. But God, I want to believe. I can't, I can't sure wait to true. see Guillermo del Toro reprise his role as Sam. Yeah. It's gonna be fucking great. <laughs> <laughs> that little troll of a man. Yeah. Oh, fantastic. Uh, Tom, what do you want for Christmas? 
Um, oh my god. I don't, I don't, do I, I don't have a meme answer, so I just want to fucking switch. I want to, I want to, I want to play wants Mario to Odyssey, <laughs> goddammit. Can't blame you, dude. I cannot blame you. It's fucking good. Dude, they just announced Bane out of three. I'm done. I Give know! Me for the Switch, the hits keep coming. God damn. Like, like ugh, fuck. Yeah, that, that, that and 10 billion subscribers so I can stop working yeah. on a job. That, that's That'd be I'm nice. Doing. We all want that. Uh, Mage, what do you want for Christmas? Uh, I don't have a meme answer either. Like, I That's have a okay. bit of a dilemma. I do want the Switch as well, but like, there mm-hmm. aren't any currently games that I want on it. But there will mm-hmm. be. Like, I know that there's a Shin Megami Tensei game coming out. On yeah, it, that's coming. And that's coming. there's definitely going to be a Pokemon game on it. So, no doubt, m- me getting a Switch at some point in my life is probably going to be inevitable. Isn't- isn't Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon coming out on the Switch? I, or, yeah, or but that's already, already available. Out. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's out. That's out. Yeah, I, I have a 3DS, so I could get it if I wanted to, but I'm I'm not particularly inclined to get it because I'm saving up some money. Um, okay. And Maybe the future. The other thing I want is I want to play Persona Five really, really bad. But the problem is I don't have a PS4 <laughs> nor a TV Indeed. to hook it onto. Is that, is that, that's on Vita too, isn't it? Um, no, no, it's not, sadly. No? Okay. Just, okay. just, just pull your, yeah, pull, like, just dust too. off your old Vita. I, uh, I, yeah, I have a Vita. Like, I got it for really wait, cheap. Wait, you do? Well. Yeah, what? I have a PS Vita. I got it for really cheap from my uh, sister's, bo- uh, well, currently husband. It's really cheap. And I got a Digimon game on it. That was fun. And hey, apparently it is available for the Vita, but it's no. got stutters and it doesn't run great. No, wait, no, no, this I is lying. It up. Are you sure? Okay, are maybe I'm wrong. I don't Persona know. Persona 5. I am not. You know what? Okay, this is my mission life. I'm going to find out right now. Hang on. <laughs> okay, because <laughs> there's is... definitely a Persona 4 Golden on PS Vita, which I'm going to get for Christmas from my parents. Oh, it, it's available on PS3? That's that's something. I don't own it, though. That that has stutters, I've heard, though. Okay, that's that's probably what it is. Okay, well, that's fucked. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so, like, that. If, if I want Persona 5, I'd have to get, like, a PS4 and a TV. Mm-hmm. Or... So... <laughs> I d- I'm not gonna get any of them, but in a perfect <laughs> world, I would get everything. <laughs> Dreams are made to not be fulfilled. That's what I. That's what I it's believe. It's good to dream. That's it's what dreams are made to dream. keep men going and keep them unsatisfied. Indeed, my dream is to never have my dream fulfilled. That's a well, that's a pretty good dream, I think. Because if you do, then you'll just languish. Wait, that's not true. Life should be about achieving goals and then setting new goals. So never mind. Uh, yeah, ignore that. <laughs> <laughs> uh, anything else, Gib? Is there anything else you want? Um, I was trying to think, and I, this is really just I want to get all of my affairs, like my currently outstanding affairs, in order oh, by yeah. the time the new year party and all that. Like, mm-hmm. all right, mm-hmm. clean slate. Let's do this. Let's do like it, it'll help my mind be clear. Yeah. So that I so that I don't have to think. Oh, I gotta do that. That's a great. Oh, goal. Yeah. I, totally, I totally feel you because I just finished that animation, and now if I can get that strike off of that. Uh, second part of why 3D anime fails. All the projects I started this year will be done and it'll yeah. feel great. So yeah. I have like a two week window to make that work. I'm hoping. I'm hoping I can like, like e- even though Even though it doesn't really make any difference because it's just the next day, but it's New Year, it's a very mental like block when mm-hmm. Totally. Mm-hmm. old year stuff is still being done. It's become totally. a cultural thing, and so you're affected by it naturally. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, and I guess what I want for Christmas. I want a microwave. I would like a microwave for Christmas. You don't I don't a own a microwave. Right I, really? I do not have a microwave. Yep. Yep. Doesn't, I, I don't I own feel one. like the wouldn't having a microwave make it easier to to start eating things that aren't fucking cans of kidney beans. <laughs> Uh, you, just, you just want to heat up well, those yeah. kidney beans? Is that is that what this uh, is all frankly, about? <laughs> frankly, the real reason is I just want to be able to cook oats much more easily than I do right now. That's that's oh. the real thing I want. Dude, you know what I have when I have like oatmeal and stuff? We uh-huh. have a, a water dispenser, a and it push. dispenses hot water, hmm. so it's like instant. Like literally, like you pour the hot water in with the oats, and it's instantly done. It's the most magical thing of all time. That's pretty good, though. I'm not sure that actually works with like the steel cut oats that I've got, because like you have to, they're, like they're pretty tough, and I think the microwave process like softens them or something. Maybe. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. I don't know. But in any case, just leave I need them some out solution. For a little while in the hot water. Hmm. Mm. Well, I'm gonna work on that. That's my goal to have better oats. Really, what I want <laughs> for Christmas is oats. I want those sweet, <laughs> sweet oats. <laughs> 
Like, what a weird uh, okay. utilitarian answer. <laughs> I got to get my fucking gains, dude. Okay, here we go. <laughs> no, another question. Uh, Snowzilla Fennekin. That's Mozilla Fennekin. What's up, dude? Uh, any plans on the PCP having more guest appearances or guest interviews with content mm. creators you enjoy? I've been thinking about this a little bit. Haven't, Actually, haven't, haven't had any ideas for that lately. That's mm-hmm. true. I, mm-hmm. I want to get Andrew Hussey on the Undertale uh, one. <laughs> oh, my God. It'll How be our Undertale great. 2 podcast, our, our best uh, game ever, number yeah. two. This when I get next... Undertale 2 for Christmas and then release <laughs> yeah. it on Steam and make a hundred million dollars. <laughs> um, I actually, there is a guy who I've been, I, I, this has been like a pet project of mine for a long time uh, that I haven't really talked about that much, but I, I want to interview Rossiter from Twin Perfect because he fascinates me. And Which one's he? I, he? He's like the main guy with glasses and uh, blonde hair with no beard. You know okay. what I'm talking about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's uh, like the he's the main dude. What I fascinates know, you about him? Like, because I've because I've watched those Twin Perfect Silent Hill videos. Yeah, uh, at it's, your it's at the, your behest. Good, good. It's it's the 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 uniquely like adversarial attitude of his videos I find very compelling, and yeah. the incredible meticulous detail both in the research of the videos as well as the editing of the videos is definitely like an has been an influence on me and. Uh, uh, I mean, it's 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 just very interesting, especially the kind of languishing that the channel has done. Uh, that like, I'm I'm just wondering why he hasn't like dedicated himself more to producing more content in a more expedient manner. I, I just want to know what makes the man tick, and mm. and know what the deal is, because it's one of my favorite channels on all of YouTube that releases content very irregularly. I don't I mean, know, they're, they're a real enigma to me. I want to know them more. You're gonna have to link me this channel because I have no idea who you're talking about. I will. I will. Go, go, uh, Twin you, perfect. YouTube search. YouTube search. Uh, the real Silent Hill experience. There's yes. a playlist. Just start okay. watching it. It is uh, like right. a, it is like an 18 or 17 episode long gauntlet it, of like it, some gigantic videos. And it kind of it kind of falls apart at the end, but whatever. Nah. nah. Yeah, it does. There's like a podcast. In there, well, somewhere. okay, that that yeah. Is it like a let's play or is it like no? Oh, it's no, like no, an no, no, anal- no. it's like a long analytical thing. Okay, it's, it's like it's Silent old Hill YouTube. T- the merits yeah. of Silent Hill Two. It basically it's it's a, it, this it whole goes Silent through the Hill whole franchise. series, the whole series. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it just discusses it in great detail. And I was like, pretty interested fantastic. by it, even despite that I've never played a Silent Hill before. The, the, watching those, what made me want to play Silent Hill, and then I did. So they're yeah. they're real good. They're real good. Uh, in any case, that, so that's that's like an idea I've had. And I actually messaged Rossiter once before, but he just didn't reply. But now that I am, now that I have officially passed Twin Perfect in subscribers, perhaps now he'll pay attention to me and uh, give a shit about me. <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> we'll we'll senpai we, pay we'll attention see. to you when you're the senpai. It's, yeah, exactly. Uh, the oh, Kohai has realized... become the senpai. <laughs> <laughs> I just realized I didn't credit the people uh, that I asked and uh, answered the questions to so quickly. Um, oh, okay. The, 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 the person who asked if I would, was going to be in Radcon was Dexter from Patreon Lounge, and mm. Ken Major Delph Me person was Squid Miku from Patreon Lounge. Excellent. Mm. Um, I Okay, I think that's going to do it. I'm not seeing any other There's questions here. Okay, if you not want to about ask me. Ahead. <laughs> okay. Looking back, what was each of your best parts of 2017, both professionally and personally? Oh, that's a good question. That is a yeah. good question. By a one spar. On Patreon. Uh, um, I first? think. Yeah. I think for mine, it was following after me and Mavva. It was Juno. It's Dark Demon Blood Month, bro. Yeah. And then Igmavo Tuidich. That was like, that was a lot of videos, and that was really stressful. But it was mm-hmm. cool that I did it. Some stressful and shit. And some dog. of those dark, the, just some of those dark demon blood month videos are really good still. Damn right they are. And the thumbnail to the first one uh, for Demon Souls is still like one of my favorite thumbnails of all time. A demon, an arrow <laughs> to the demon. <laughs> oh, it's excellent. Uh, this has been a huge year for me, obviously. Uh, Mia Mafva was 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 uh, crazy. Was huge. Was big. Uh, but actually, like, the channel doubled in size, of course, with the Galco video beforehand, where I finally broke, like, it was funny, like, all these barriers, like, kind of broke all at the same time around, like, May of this year, where, like, I had never, I remember, like, I, I had been saying on Twitter and stuff, I so, I'm so close to 17,000 subscribers, the old goal that, that, uh, TBAP never reached, I want to break that, that's my goal, and then I did, and then immediately Galco came out, and over the next, like, couple of, couple of days and weeks, my channel more than doubled in size, like, 40,000. And then, um, yeah, fuck. And, and then just like Mia Maffa was already happening because I had already planned it before Galco came out. And that was that was big. That made people like aware of my channel as like a thing that was it was going to update regularly. 
And now I'm, I've just like learned from those experiences and I made a couple videos and now I'm doing Weagua and things have never been better in terms of the online stuff. Yay. Yeah, it's real great. It's real great. Sick. Oh, also, we all started the PCP uh, Patreon this year, and that was definitely God, good. God, that was only this year? That was only this year. That was only this wow. year. It was like March uh, or something. Yeah. She is. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. Um, well, I mean, I finished Champion Chapter 1, finally, mm-hmm. uh, uh, I f- which was great. I finished uh, Nuzlocke Conquest, which was a relief. Oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> I was so <laughs> glad when that was over. Um, yeah, good stuff. Good stuff. Yeah, um, I think my my favorite like professional thing that I did this year was just learning 3D. Like I've I've told myself I wanted to learn. Th- I was gonna make a video about this actually today, just talking about it because I just mm. released the animation. Uh, but I've wanted to okay. do 3D since 2006, and I always told myself I was too dumb to do it. And this year I finally nutted up, and I went from knowing nothing yeah. about it to making an animation in 11 months. So way to go, dude! That was cool. That I- was. And uh, I really love your little, uh, the little gifts or uh, like rotations of ooh. like little models you make oh, on, Tom, on Twitter. Oh, yeah. Tom. The, the the thing, the animation went up today, right? Uh, it went a couple up yesterday, days ago. actually. Okay, I haven't seen yeah, it yet. So I got. I, I watched it. Look. Was pretty impressed. Though I wanted to watch it again because I I could only quickly watch it at the time. Yeah, it's, Wait, it's which, not, which, I mean, it, there's room for improvement, but in terms of just like getting it out, it looked pretty it smooth. Done, I noticed which, that hip sway. I noticed that hip sway going which, on. Which <laughs> channel was it on? Uh, it's on my main channel. It's on Tommy Oliver. It's uh, funny you, you say that hip sway is good because I had a guy uh, who com- I woke up to this guy who left like a, a huge essay comment saying what? he was quote a professional animator and did a shot okay. by shot breakdown of how terrible it was. Well, that's so, kind of a compliment, I suppose, in, in uh, its own he said, way. Fuck, it w- his, his comment was of "fuck <laughs> you." I thought you were good at art. What is dude, this, dude? What the fuck? That, that dude. was it's. it's- it's no. really. Right. I saw that comment as well. It's basically he 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 copied it from a Discord where he was discussing it among mm. people. Yeah, okay. and he, he pasted he... it, but he didn't take out like the the colloquial <laughs> things he was saying to his friends about how Tom <laughs> is in th- in the third person is terrible. Yeah, it was which was uh, it was the worst. And then, thing and then you I called him on it. And he, I called him on it, and he's like, "Yeah, that's exactly what happened." And then he messaged me on Twitter. He's like, "I'm sorry." I'm like, "Yeah, fuck you." Well, okay, that's <clears> nice. <laughs> but yeah, but, but the, <laughs> some of the, some of the criticisms. Sisms he had was, you know, they 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 they, they were all right. Like there they was made tons sense. of good yeah, good I, I ideas mean, in there for improving. You're a, you're, you're still Sandwich learning. between you're a right. fucking retard. So that was fun. But no, that that my favorite like professional thing was was a three D. My favorite personal thing this mm-hmm, year was mm-hmm. definitely uh, Rad Country watching Mad Bull with everybody. Oh, I forgot oh. it. Rad Country was this year, guys. Remember that? <laughs> I In remember January, now. But yeah, yeah, it was fucking January. Wow. Jeez Louise. Yeah, I miss those days for soon. Me. For me, uh, personally, I think I mentioned that in the last uh, podcast, when I got my health in order, like at the end of um, mm-hmm. uh, May or so, that was that was like the best thing. That's a huge deal. Ma- Major's out there Major's out there grinding random Pokemon with her whole team, either dead or at low HP. So she finally visited Nurse Joy and everything's in, in top <laughs> shape once again. Thank yes. God. <laughs> I was visited the Pokemon <laughs> Center finally. <laughs> Uh, professionally, I I don't know. Like, I feel like it all f- fell That's into place. That's a big place. this year. Huh? You had like mm-hmm. two videos hit a million views this year. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, yes, it's yes nuts. I have. Yeah. That's insane. I I am I I had to I had to turn off comments on one of the videos because it was driving Lol. me insane. Like, I don't want to like. Um, what were they it, doing? What were they t- What were they saying smack about? <laughs> it's it's like. It's like the same comments every now, like like every every mm-hmm. day. I wake up to the same exact comments, and I have to reply with the z- ex- exact same thing. And like, well, you, you know don't have to. Like, well, I know I don't have to, but like, I was, I just, we're weak, I had ben. to. We're weak I've creature. I've stopped. I've stopped. Uh, I get I get a ton of comments on the Chris Chan video to this day, yeah, and like, yeah. I, but I, I haven't replied to one in, in a long time. I I do like that comment that was like, uh, man, this video is great. Too bad about the autists, you know, just like that you have to look at and, and experience. <laughs> yeah, yeah, uh, those are my favorites. He, he loves those fucking autists. He's watching a Christian video. He loves autistic people. Fuck that. Wait, guy. someone someone commented like like a couple days ago and said like mm-hmm. I watch this video like every like every two weeks and I I, yeah. I, I, almost, I almost commented like thanks for the clicks or like thanks for the views dude thanks for oh, the watch just, time that's nice that's I feel nice. like that yeah, might like, be I one do of my want, friends cause, cause like when people legitimately mm-hmm. like it I wanna like yeah, yeah. I wanna like tell them you know I'm thanks I'm glad you enjoy this but like, I, I, there's just so I, many there's so many when I see many. when I see comments like that like uh, the, the Kingdom Hearts video was out this year and that was also great but when, whenever I get a, com- a mean comments on anything or rather when I get a really nice 
nice comment that I'd like to be like, oh, thanks, dude, or anything like that. I, I generally suppress the urge because I don't want the people leaving mean comments to know that I'm reading their comments and only replying to the nice ones. Oh, I don't want to give them oh, that yeah, power. Oh, yeah, yeah. No, I never, you know? I would never reply to like a, a shitty comment or, or of course, a comment of criticizing course. me because it's like, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah, we don't, we don't. We don't need to, to what spare, they want. We don't need to spare those any attention. No, my I, favorite thing to do with mean comments is to reply nicely because they don't know hmm. what to do after that. Yeah, That's always yeah. fun because if they respond, they're just like, uh, uh, if if fuck. if they do, uh, they are in fact uh, the fool. I usually and, uh, reply you know. mimicking their attitude or make fun of them. I don't know. Like it really depends on the comment. Mm-hmm. I sometimes I don't reply at all if it's just not worth my time. But I, sometimes maybe if I feel feel like I have something to say, I say it. But if usually someone, if I don't take it seriously. If someone just comments in a way that's like they don't like me, then I just don't respond because like, right. well, whatever. Oh, uh, but, oh. if, but, if, but if it's someone like if it's someone who's like criticizing or saying something that's like wrong or like making some kind of some kind of like claim that's wrong and like then I'll reply and be like, listen, yeah, he, let me I've set the tempted. record straight on this because like I don't want people reading mm-hmm. this comment and, and believing it. Okay, I'm always well, tempted to reply to those sorts of things, but generally I find myself replying more to, I mean, if this is rare, this is like the rarest breed, but like someone making a, like a substantive, sincere criticism of like any point or whatever, those I will reply to <laughs> uh, some, sometimes. Not, I want to say quickly, I, uh, yeah, go ahead. it's like, um, if, if people like post like super angry or, or, or something like comments like that, like one of my favorite things to play with is just lol. That that's all. <laughs> I I don't want to do that because I feel like that gives them what they want. They got your attention. No, yeah. it's just like they never like reply. They attention. never reply to it though. Like I haven't had a peop- a person reply to lol. To lol. It's just well, I- fair enough. If it works for you, then but Godspeed. <laughs> Uh, I don't always, yeah. but sometimes I do. It works. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, um, any more questions? I think that's about it. I think we've tapped did, did out. Did Gib have something to say? I think I feel like he had. I was. Uh, mm-hmm. It was just a, about a comment thing. Mm-hmm. Um, but I don't. Uh, the moment feels like it's passed. Oh, I'm I, sorry. You can say it's it. Okay. I, I, I want to hear it, Gib. I want to hear that <laughs> shit. Tell me about the oh. comment. Oh, okay. For you. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, for me. <laughs> the fu- the fucking. Uh, I had a comment recently uh, on my Ape Escape Part Three mm-hmm. uh, video, saying it was the worst one I ever made, and I was oh, like, the worst I, video I, I felt, ever. I felt really? terrible. Yeah, Jeez I saw Louise. that. And I wanted to kill him. Yeah, but um, has he even there, well, there seen was, there was a people... GRPJ? I mean, I, jeez. I I love GRPJ. But, I, honestly, I wish you would make more GRPJ. Yeah, me too. Me, me too. <laughs> um. Anyway, uh, the, there was two people who who asked that uh, said that, and I was like, oh, I'm gonna respond mm, mm. because I I just I I just really want to know like why why yeah. why is it the worst one? <laughs> and I felt better just asking him, so what didn't you like about it? And then he replied with more specifics, and I yeah. was like, okay, that actually me- makes me feel better knowing it precisely what was wrong. Yeah, because oh, yeah. it's, lo- it's no longer like an ephemeral thing of like, you're terrible. Now it's like, okay, he's based like on specific yeah, criticisms. Yeah. I can, I, these I can, can be changed or, you know. I can totally yeah. relate. Uh, one of the comments I got on, on the the video that I disabled the comments on, like, it's not mm. necessarily a bad comment. It's not the reason I disable comments. It's just like, um, uh, they commented something like, oh, well, where the fuck did that, an- that anime go? And I'm like, what's mm. the problem with it? And they were like, oh, in that specific point, uh, uh, his head seems a bit too big. And I was like, yeah, that's mm. a fair point. Uh, you could have just started with that. And they're like, yeah, oh, sorry yeah. about being too direct. And I was like, See, that's, the problem yeah. was that you weren't direct enough. <laughs> it, right, exactly. Yeah, it, it's just like the commenter atmosphere, you know. Like, we, we got to change the commenter culture, guys. Make it more conducive. It's, it's really just that people think that they're not going to have uh, to respond to a reply yeah, about exactly. it. So they don't exactly. feel the need to make it clear the first time. And they're I get just it. throwing get it out there. We all love a little bit of shit posting now and again. Yeah. Well. All right. I, I guess that's it, everybody. I think uh, we're. I think we're. We're concluded. Yee. So uh, let's yep. see. Let's see. What do we got here? Uh, thanks for the question. Send on the Twitter using hashtag AskPCP. We record on Saturdays around noon Eastern Standard Time. So watch out for that shit. Uh, oh we yeah, got, we're recording uh, earlier. We're recording earlier now. That's yeah. true. In case that's you, true. in case you might be confused. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. We've got uh, the, the 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 oh yes, of course we got the the fan patron chat. Uh, if you subscribe to our Patreon at patreon.com slash the procrastinators, get access to that where we read generally just more questions. That's we're more where likely I to read see the yours. questions from. 
Indeed, indeed. That's what the good shit is, everybody. So uh, pledge to the Patreon at in any amount. Actually, it has to be a minimum of $1, technically, I believe. And you'll get access to the Patreon, uh, uh, the Patreon Discord, that is. And you can talk to us, and we hang out, and we all have fun times, and it's good. Now pledge $5, of course, and you get access to our bonus episodes. There are nine of which out right now. Last one was Inuyasha versus Charlie Brown. And, oh, wait, there was a preview of it at the beginning of this episode? No, last episode. Uh, last, episode. Uh, last episode. Last episode. That's right. That's right. So uh, that's some good shit. You can hear a preview last episode, and there's there's more good things coming. And uh, we've also got the podcast here available on iTunes and Google Play, at least for now, even though we seem to be getting shit for downloads on those. So uh, yeah, I got I to gotta, – everybody asked for it, and then I checked the Google Play downloads yesterday. Yeah. It's like three. Yeah, so exactly. Fuck I don't. <laughs> I don't know what the fuck you people are talking about. Making me work to the bone. For Maybe nothing. iTunes is more. I don't know. We, Maybe we, iTunes. We, is we better. agonized over the iTunes things for like a year. It yeah, was. It yeah. was a lot of work, and it still is. It. It's. It's more work than it should be getting them up. And, and mm-hmm. the, the dumb thing is, iTunes doesn't track your downloads. So I got to dig into Bluehost to find out downloads uh, for iTunes, which is for... moronic regrettable i found no the reason i found out is that itunes like apple has one guy in charge of all of podcasts because they don't because they don't make any money off of it they don't give a fuck so one guy's in charge of the entire thing yeah i guess that makes sense okay (laughs) well now we know that's why capitalism works baby if they made money then people (laughs) would care about it Capitalism makes me work i gotta do extra shit now because these motherfuckers (laughs) we'll have to throw you an extra tuppence or two uh what else are we a a pittance (laughs) a pittance uh, I, th- I think that, did I miss anything? Oh, uh, uh, redbubble.com slash people slash the procrastinators. We got shirts and stuff. People go buy them. They are fun. They are good. And they are, uh, the money supports the show. So there you go. And enjoy some sweet loot. Oh, it's a great Christmas gift, everybody. Go to redbubble.com slash people slash the procrastinators and buy an all your loved ones procrastinators merch. You will not regret it. Put a sticker of Ben Saint in your fucking fridge to steal all your food. Put a sticker of, uh, you know, whatever you want. Remember, remember, guys, guys, don't don't procrastinate on the holidays. Procrastinators the holidays. Yeah. Yeah. If you buy this. Stickers, especially with me and Tom, like with me pointing at something, like p- please, like send me, like tweet at me where you apply those stickers. I want to see what yes, you're just pointing please at. Mention both of us and, and be sure to buy a stack of them. So all the important things in your life, you can have me yeah. pointing it to pressure you into getting it done. Do you need to go to the gym? Put this prep mage point to your gym membership. Get your ass to the gym. You know what we should do? We should make another version of that sticker that has like a speech bubble over Mage's head, so you can write in like a note. So that oh. she can point at the thing, and it could be like, they that's could not all a bad idea. That. They, could they could all have a speech. Yeah, bubble. not oh, a bad yes. idea. We could, oh, they could be actually useful notes. People can, can write, write a sheet of them. Could could them. Add some weird you utilitarianism to these. Markers. Exactly. <laughs> that would oh, be I cute. like this. Oh, I like this. Uh, all right. Oh, dude, what if we had a color coded set of nine markers, each like with the color of our like avatar thing? Oh, Ooh, there's gonna oh, be I a like lot of shades of purple. Oh yeah. I'm not gonna mind. Mage is a separate pack that's just like 20 different shades of purple. That's but I want mine to be black, not gray. I want mine to be black. Okay, just good. like just... your uh, race. All right, okay, <laughs> good. <laughs> All right, well, uh, I guess that's it, everybody. Well, Go well, buy we things, are, Well, we are Patreon. brothers, Nate, after all, Indeed, you indeed. Yeah. Well, uh, 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 you know, uh, soul brothers, not blood <laughs> brothers. Exactly, yeah, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> right, we are, in fact, soul men. Uh, all right. Thanks for listening, though. everybody. I guess that's going to do it. <laughs> Thanks for listening to this bullshit meandering ending here. And we'll see you uh, <laughs> next fucking time. Yeah, Bye. 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 Yeah. Uh, I'm supposed to.